It's been way too long, I've been building walls around me Keep my distance so you never know too much about me Trying to keep you wild cause I love my safe space Thank you so much for joining us in this virtual marriage conference. I'm excited to be here with Matt and Tammy and my beautiful wife, Rebecca. My name's Andrew Bogenwright, and I'm the marriage pastor here at Sandals. And today we're gonna to be talking about finances because we know that you love to talk about finances and we know that you love to fight about finances. And uh, we know it's important. And so we're gonna kick it off right where you're at. We wanna be real with you, what you're dealing with the things that you're struggling with, especially in the season with COVID, it's a big deal. Some of you have lost income. You, you're not in alignment about how you wanna use it. And so we wanna really hear from Matt and Tammy about how they've worked through some of those things as a couple, how they get on the same page. And so I got some questions for you guys. Yeah, glad and to be here. Yeah, uh, I would love for, to hear from you just how you guys handle money sort of generally, and then we can kind of dive down more specifically yeah, I would just say that we we did. He makes it. Yeah, I spend it. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, but when we when we first got married, you made it yeah, and I yeah. spent it. So, um, That's I, I think that we didn't handle it well. So, we, we've learned from our mistakes, and so we came from two different families, two different uh, understandings and ways of dealing with money, and so my, my dad uh, is is high Dutch. <laughs> So if you don't know what Dutch people are like, it's where the term Dutch treat comes from. You pay for you, I pay for me, and we move forward together and everybody's happy. So uh, that's just where you know I came from. Tammy's parents were just like, let the money fly. You know, We'll worry about it later. Everybody order, everybody happy. And so, so you can sense that mm -hmm. there was some, some mm -hmm. tension there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we just, we didn't handle it well. And I would say this to every husband, I did not understand that I had to earn Tammy's trust in order to handle her finances. And I made some mistakes early on. And so I think the key to handling finances is, is to own it. Um, guys, you need, you need to go first. That's what the Bible calls, is you need to own it and say, look, I've blown it. Um, Andrew and Becca, I've known them since they were kids. I, I knew them when they were single. Uh, I've known them since, they're just, you've always been ahead of most couples with money. And I've always admired that about you guys. Um, you know, Andrew and Becca, you know, they don't put a premium on, you know, their automobiles, they, they, they draw, you know, they, you're very practical people. And I think you guys have done very well with your money. And so I'm proud of you that way. Tammy and I were not Andrew and Becca when we got married and we made a lot of mistakes. I'm a three, so on the Enneagram. So I care about the clothes I wear, the car that I drive. And oftentimes that's in the driver's seat rather than what can we afford mm -hmm. and, uh, and where are we at now? And so I would say this, and I know I'm talking a lot, but, but life is about seasons. Um, a lot of young people today look at what their mom and dad have, and they don't realize that it took their mom and dad mm -hmm. two decades, yeah. sometimes three yeah. decades to build that. Yeah. And the assumption is, that's where I'm gonna start. Right. And uh, Tammy and I didn't start where we are. We started, we were very, very poor. We really struggled early on, and we made a lot of mistakes. So I had to earn Tammy's trust, and I had to prove to her that I could pay the bills on time, that I could manage our budget. And we didn't know when we got married that I was good at finances. I didn't know that and Tammy didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that because I hadn't been good with finances and Tammy didn't know that because I hadn't demonstrated that. And so um, I've been blessed. Tammy's not a big spender. Matter of fact, if we have a fight, my frustration with Tammy is that she buys cheap things. So I get, <laughs> I get irritated because I know that we're gonna replace this. And so like, if we're going to buy something, I want it to be something that lasts. And, so, and Tammy's very budget conscious. And so I have to encourage her, you know, I, I don't have a wife that's, you know, she's not wearing $10,000 rings, <laughs> $20,000 <laughs> rings. You know, matter of fact, I mean, when did I get these for our 20th? 20th anniversary. So our 20th anniversary, you know, what she wanted was was moderate, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was, and I'm not saying that that's wrong if you have a bunch of jewelry. I'm just saying I don't come from a place, um, you know, where she wants something extravagant. You know, we just bought her a new car for Christmas. She got a Mini Cooper. Now that's a nice car, but it's not a Mercedes. It's not a, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying, I'm just saying that's, you, so you have to factor in everything that we say with what is your reality? What is your background? What is your culture? And I think over 24 years, we have figured out a way to uh, you know, come together and, and we've really had to work at, hey, are you okay if, what do you think about, and we, we communicate a lot about what we're gonna spend money on because 
it doesn't grow on trees, and there is a limited amount. Yeah, yeah. I would say, uh, do you want to go? Yeah, I was just going to ask how you started uh, trusting Matt. He talked about, like, painfully, painfully slowly, <laughs> earn trust. Well, for the first several, the first few years of our marriage, I was the primary income earner. I was teaching school. Matt was working part-times, a few jobs, and we were starting the church. And I did, I handled all the finances. I don't even exactly know why it started that way, but it just did. Like I had the bank account, I was home, I was doing all that. And every month on bill day, I would lose my mind. I am six on the Enneagram, I didn't know this then, but just so much anxiety, so much stress, so much like, how are we gonna eat? I tend to go worst case scenario, <laughs> forget. A check's gonna come in a few weeks again. I'll be like, oh, we're so tight. Um, and one day, literally after, I don't know, five, six years of marriage, Matt said, it doesn't stress me out. Why don't I just do it? Mm. This was such a funny time too, because it was like right at that transition where you could do bills online. So I would like write the checks out, uh -huh. have to figure out, I have to mail you to it this day. Yeah. Balance to like the checkbook. Have it, get yeah. there by this day, yeah. you know. Within a week, Matt has it online pushing a button like and so it just it just started you know then we were both working full time we started making you know more money one of the things though that I had to change was I tend to think what do I want right now like I want this car now or this outfit now or this couch now and Matt's more of what what do I want it to look like then mm -hmm. like later and so he thinks about things like, I want to be able to help pay our kids go to college. I want to be able to have our house paid. I, and so he's thinking about what choices we're making now so that I can have our finances look like this then. We're getting closer to that now because we've been married 24 years, you know. But I was so in the moment that I would have spent every dime we had and then when the future came, not been ready. Yeah. And so we did have a tension to say no to things early on that we don't have to say no to now because we said no then. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we don't, he was a very like, we're not doing payments on stuff. And not to say payment, payments just were stress for us. They were stress for him, they were stress for me. We don't do well paying for fun later that we've already had. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's not that. our way. Um, and yeah, so we instituted, you know, we tied 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then that's that's what we started. Some of you are nowhere near that, and that's fine. But we we, we started with we started at ten percent. Mm -hmm. We give to missionaries, missions, little league, all, all that stuff comes over and above that, and we save ten percent. So you know we're at a position now. So if you're if you're a young couple and you're struggling, you know Tammy Tammy and I, and I don't want to brag, but we're at a position now. Let's say the church goes under. We can sustain ourselves with our cash flow for about a year and a half. We have that much cash saved up in, 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 you know, I mean, it's not liquid, but I can get to it in different ways over a period of about 18 months because I realized early on as a church planter, you can't always, what I learned is what some of you are learning is you can't always count on the job. You can't always count on the paycheck. And so you have to save for a rainy day because you, you don't know. And that's one of the reasons we've been able to pay our staff throughout Sandals for the last, what, 12 weeks he because he runs our church the way he runs yeah our because home. i run our church the same way <laughs> yeah. as we, we we have to have a pile of cash just in case god forbid COVID happens well it never happened until it happened and so you just have to learn to live on less and most people think that the key to to finances is making more the key to finances is learning to live on less yeah. and building in margin so that you so that you can uh, be prepared and just in case something goes wrong yeah. and you just need to know most people don't live this way. I think our politicians, uh, Republican and Democrat, are terrible about holding people accountable. That they 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 blow all their money. They spend like like you don't have to bail out people who've saved. Mm -hmm. You have to bail out people who don't save, who didn't plan, and they do this to wealthy corporations. They do this for poor people. We're constantly bailing out people because nobody. A hundred years ago, you just died. Like you just <laughs> you walked into the field and you just died, and that's what happened. Um, you know, or you, you rob the bank or whatever else. What is it? So, go ahead. I was gonna say, so how do you, um, for, for the couples that are watching, that, that one of them's a spender, one of them's thinking about the future, yeah. how, do you, how did you guys merge those perspectives, begin to work together in finances and not like be kind of in yeah. separate? Well, what I would do, to, yeah, yeah, what I would do now is, is I, would, I would learn about the Enneagram and I would try to understand 
why Tammy was so terrified mm -hmm. about money mm -hmm. and why I was so insecure that I felt like I drove much nicer cars in my 30s than I do now. We would drive cars we couldn't afford. I felt like I had to project an image. Mm -hmm. I compared myself to Pastor Greg Laurie and other pastors who were far more successful and had done a lot more. And so I felt like I had to live up to this image. And I just, so see what I'm saying? Why, why, why does money matter? What, 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 was, what is it about your culture, mm -hmm. your upbringing that says, I'm only worth what I wear. Right. I'm only worth what I have. And um, you know, I, you guys just need to know as your pastor, I'm not wearing thousand dollar jackets. I'm not wearing $600 shoes. I don't have a, you know, a $2,000 watch because that's not who I think I need to be. That's not who I want. Now it's. But you've had to grow yeah. into that. And I think part of it, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, part of what we know now is because we've had time and space to learn it over the years. Sure. And so a lot of young couples, <laughs> they do. And, and thanks to a window into everyone's life on social media, you yeah. see all these houses that are fully furnished. Mm -hmm. Our first house was furnished with things our parents and friends yep. gave yeah, us. Absolutely. Same. Yeah. And we live with those. And so I remember, you know, last, a couple weeks ago, Matt um, did the Lord's Supper with our dining room table. I saved for that table for like almost yeah. two years. You know, and I remember buying that table. <laughs> you know, it's funny, we recently bought a set of Cutco knives and I literally walk into the living room and I'm like, I feel like we've arrived. <laughs> like, because, you know, we've saved and yeah. I can buy a Cutco knife yeah. now. And they're but, so nice. That's your, and, your thing <laughs> you know I'm like but um, you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. and so part of part of growing up is that you learn things we cared about things when we were younger that we we look back on and we're like we were idiots mm -hmm. but you don't know that when you're young you don't know what you know you don't know when you're young that the outfit you're buying today you're never gonna wear again in three months because every style has changed that that you had to have it you know, those are things you start going of like, I don't need to buy the most expensive this or have this purse because in two months it's out. You know, and so what I would encourage couples to do is to try to think bigger than in the moment. I mean, that's what we've had to do. And you really helped with that of like, we want some things later in life that so we can not have, it, have that stress now, yeah, yeah. you know, but you used to always say that phrase, like we buy things to impress people. Yeah. Do you remember how that goes? Yeah, I used to say like we we, uh, we work jobs we hate to earn money. We we don't need to buy things we don't want to impress people we don't like. That's what I used to say. And I yeah. think a lot of people are there. And here's the thing is, is I think especially with Instagram and our younger generation, you're constantly reminded every single day of what everybody has. And what you don't have. And what you yeah. don't have. Yeah. And, we, and yeah. we, we were, when we got married, we were surrounded by people who didn't have a lot. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it was okay that our TV, and we were grateful to have one TV that sat on blocks, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. that's what it sat on. It sat on stone blocks. And mm -hmm. we sat on a futon. That was our first couch. Yeah. Futon is horrible. I mean, it's fun if you're 19. Sometimes Matt slept on that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, here's what I would say is, is, when you're single, you spend what you want on what you want. Mm -hmm. When you're married, that cannot happen. Mm -hmm. And that cannot happen for the husband and that cannot happen yeah. for the wife. And you have to have real conversations about how selfish you actually are. Mm -hmm. Not just one of you, but both of you. Yeah, and um, you know, I can't spend money. I, I have less anxiety than Tammy. I cannot spend money at a rate that causes her not to sleep and feel anxious. That's mm -hmm. sinning against my wife. I'm mm -hmm. sinning against her. So if I love her, uh, I, I need to listen to her, but she also is married to a three. She's married to somebody who's a go-getter and wants to do things and wants to take risks, and we have to work that out together. And um, I think it's always better to miss out on an opportunity when both of you aren't on the same page. It's okay. Tammy and I have missed out on opportunities because she's not been okay with it or I've not been okay mm -hmm. with it. I'm almost always going to be okay with it. Yeah, let's go for it. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, Man, I recently made an investment in the stock market without talking to Tammy, and and it didn't it, do well. It didn't do well, yeah. and I was like, okay. So I came, I came back. How does that feel as a six, Tammy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, but here's the thing. Long term, that investment doesn't shake us either way. Yeah. It's it's, it's lost money, but it's not it's not it's not money that we need to survive. It was money that I was trying to plan for our future. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from our house that we had sold. So but, yeah. so. I came back and I said, okay, I, I want to bring you, because I handle the finances, I do the planning, you know, 
I, I'm the visionary in the relationship, but I realized if I'm gonna lose this amount of money, I need to make sure that we. He's like, I don't want, I don't want that to only be on my shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and here's the thing is, since that time, it's flipped and we've made a ton of money, because. Well, fake money on, online. Yeah, it's not fake money, it's, it's, uh, it's gone like, the other way. today, we're down today. I'm Virtual like, money. I, I yeah, don't like yeah, this game, yeah, I, don't yeah. like, I don't like yeah, this game. See, that's where you, uh, yeah. like, we, we've, 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 we're way in the positive and it's real good. I still have to remind myself of what it felt like when I thought I lost, mm -hmm. because, so I'm not gonna take all the credit now because I, I didn't wanna take all the blame. So I have to, mm -hmm. I have to be really careful, but most of you, it's about saying, okay, I want a Lexus, but I should drive a used Toyota, mm. okay? Is it reliable? Does it get me from A to B? You know, w w what's going on? I could, I could live in this house, but what are the expenses that go with that house? You know, what, 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 are, what are the realities of that? And, and here's the thing, nobody or very few people actually talk to you about that, so you have to learn to have those conversations yourselves. Uh, yeah, a car is great, but what about tires? What about oil? Um, you know, I recently had to take my daughter outside and, and her boyfriend and say, we change the oil every three to 6,000 miles because if you don't, you get to pay $6,000 for an engine. Mm -hmm. and, and dad's not paying that. So, like, those are the things that you have to do, you know, delayed maintenance. All you're doing is kicking the expense down the road and it's going to be bigger. Um, and, it, and it's not fun, but have the conversations and um, one of the things too that I think I'm so old by saying this I hate that I have to say it but like this next generation our kids generation is missing out on is what you talked about earlier is the concept of saving for a rainy day uh -huh. is just lost in mm -hmm. the world right now like it's never gonna come and I think things like COVID it's like wait everyone's not working everybody mm -hmm. and people are like ah this is such a good opportunity to kind of reset in that way and realize there isn't a promise of something like this not happening again. Yeah. We have to be set. You know, even during this time, you know, we had talked about a couple things I want to do at the house and we're like, we're going to pause on that and see what this looks like, you know. So so he had to tell me, let's we need to pause on that, you know, kind of a deal and so um, I think that one of the things that has worked well for us too that I think young couples need to do is what matters to you to spend money on. Yeah. You know, for us, Matt likes to spend money on food. He has a lot of health issues with food, so he's, he wants a certain kind of food. I like good food. I want to spend money on our house and my clothes. <laughs> you know, like, and so there has to be some margin for that, but there can't be margin for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. what are the most important things to you to spend money on? Matt wants to spend money on food and activities. Like he is just an active person. He wants a bike, he wants a snowboard, he wants a gym membership. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and I have Sometimes my own Sometimes two gym memberships. <laughs> Don't get me started. Okay, <laughs> but you know what I mean? There has to be yeah. some built in margin for those important things. But in that, I need to go, I can spend this much, but not this much. Mm -hmm. And so when he came, when he came to be like, fine, she likes to spend stuff on the house, great. Because I'd be like, we already have a picture. Why do you want a new one? Well, that picture's 10 years old. I don't like it in that spot anymore. That's a <laughs> lot that of like? women yeah. are that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, the worst one ever was when we painted our house, the walls white again. Do you know, do you, does anybody want to know what color the, the walls were when we moved in? White. I'm sure they were white. <laughs> they were all yeah. white. So D we different, paid. Different shade. I, 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 paid, I paid a professional to. That was to, so 10 years. <laughs> to paint it a different color, because I think that's an issue with men. There's some things that we would never change. I, I joke with Tammy all the time. He, like, if she if dies, die, nothing's moving. And she comes back and haunts the house. And I'm like, you're gonna know. <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna you're gonna know where everything is because I, I ain't moving it. Like, right. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Re are you gonna ever gonna like rearrange couches? Like, but we but we got healthier when we realized <laughs> yeah. and made margin. Like you were like, if if that's where you want to spend, okay. But here's the parameter for that. Mm -hmm. So then I had some some room to swim in what yeah. I like to spend on with boundaries that I knew we couldn't fight on. He didn't need to like micromanage that and vice versa. Mm. So we have yeah. we have Bank of America, she probably doesn't know this, but uh, <laughs> but Bank of America has AI and her name is Erica. So Erica, I my favorite messages are from Erica and she says, great job this month, Matthew. You've spent this much less than what you made. Oh, like so she nice. says that, like I'm like, Erica, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> So Erica, Erica is the artificial intelligence machine that 
that helps you. Who's Eric? Yeah, that <laughs> helps, <laughs> helps you manage your money. Uh, uh -huh. So it's like you know Alexa or uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Siri. Siri. Yeah. So it's there, it's Erica is their artificial intelligence, but that helps you. Hey, you're overspending here. Hey, you could save here. Um, helps you organize and budget all that stuff, and she's very affirming. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate. It. But but what I would say is is what are the strengths? Be honest about the strengths. Yeah, Be honest about say. your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And Tammy could do our finances. She was very good at our finances. But the I toll, lost my mind. the mm -hmm. emotional mm -hmm. toll. And here's the thing is. In those early days, man, we our margin was razor thin. Was there margin? Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> we was. we really struggled paying the bills. So mm -hmm. I mean, some of us just aren't in that. You know, Tammy and I aren't in that place where we pay bills and 99% of your money just went out. We're just not there anymore. But mm -hmm. here's how you get there. What I watch Sandals couples do is every time they get a raise, they spend more and they spend more and they spend more. And here's what you need to know. Most of the wealthy people in our church, most of them, when we, when we do momentum, when we do uh, giving, um, they, they don't have any margin because they got a house in Mammoth, they got a house at the river, they got a boat, they got this and they got that. And they, 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 can't, they can't be generous because they haven't learned. And here's the, here's the rule of finances. You have to learn to say no to yourself. I tell myself I can always buy it tomorrow, but I can't always take it back. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that was actually the question that I was thinking of that I wanted to ask you guys. I mean, you talked about, um, you said the word generosity and you talked about your values. I've always known you guys to be incredibly generous people with your resources, with your finances. How did you guys come to maybe the same understanding or how did you guys come to value generosity and then position yourself in a place where you could actually be generous? Yeah, I would say two, two men in particular, my dad and Tammy's dad. My dad gives to the things of God. Mm -hmm. Like he, my dad, man, if you're, if, you're, if you're doing it for God, my dad's writing a check. My mm -hmm. dad, and he's Dutch, right? Like he's cheap. But if it's for God, my dad writes a check. Mm -hmm. And then I met Tammy's dad. You know, he, he wasn't a Christian. He didn't go to church, but he's extraordinarily generous. And he loved to, to take people to dinner. And he loved to, like Tammy's dad would be giddy on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. He he was so excited to see you, and I I'm his I'm his son-in-law, to open the gift that he got mm -hmm. me. And I thought, both are godly, both are different, both are godly. Mm -hmm. So I want to give to God, and I want to generously give to people, mm -hmm. and 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 it was modeled for me. So then I have to go. Okay, I'm a pastor. Okay, you you know what you make, you know what he makes, right? She probably doesn't. Oh, <laughs> so um, you know, it's not it's not a lot. I mean, it, you, I, I mean, hopefully you feel like you're appreciated and yeah, we love you. Right. But you know, it, nobody's getting rich here. Like that's just not happening, and that's a sacrifice that we make. So in order to be generous and to be middle income, you have to be uber disciplined, and and you have to just go against the idiots that are spending, buying, and people say dumb things all the time. Well. well you know, they're not making any more land or, you know, housing values will never go down. They're always wrong. Mm -hmm. They're always wrong. And I, I, I've lived long enough to watch him be wrong over and over again. Uh, we have a friend of ours that was a real estate expert. He was a pastor on staff uh, and he helps, he actually helped me hire you. But I remember him, he told me, he said, um, that the real estate industry will never make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. And he said that in like 2002. Well, then there was 08, mm -hmm. right? And it's just like this cycle of, Nobody learns unless you want to learn. Mm -hmm. And so you have to choose to say, okay, I'm going to spend less. And it's okay to have an apartment. It's okay to have yeah. a used car. Those things are okay. What's not okay for us is to not give to God. What's not okay for us is to not be generous. Mm -hmm. and, um, and have you guys always been on the same page with that? <laughs> In To some degree, but not, all, not the way we are now. Mm. But, How did you work through that? Um, you know, when we were younger, like it was just a non-negotiable when we got married to tithe, which mm -hmm. I didn't grow up tithing. I didn't grow up in that way. Um, and so starting out, that there there were so many months in those early years of like, we don't have it, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I think my, my, the big answer, the blanket answer, Becca, would be God. Like that obedience and tithing 
like we're gonna tithe and I don't know how it's gonna work or my parents are just gonna have to buy us dinner all month, you know, kind yeah. of, and that, that was a real thing at certain times. Um, then a gift card would show up in the mail mm. from some friends thinking of you, an oven. Uh, right. Our stories of God providing in the most crazy ways are so huge. So, so I think God, every tiny step of obedience on our mm. end, God matched. Mm. In a, in a weird way and then the more generous we were to people God has done the same thing wow. you know and we've decided so so God that has been almost a match for match that's just gotten yeah. bigger over the years that's awesome. you know and but I would say yeah. I would say this God God does not and will not bless the fool right right he does not and saying, he will not bless the fool the and meetings. what I hear foolish people say is God will provide God will provide and bless when the fool mm -hmm. stops being foolish. And there were things early on that we did um, that were foolish. So we were poor, we could barely make rent, we bought two large dogs. That was foolish. We? we? I was just kidding. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, bought, I bought two large dogs. I'm like, we, it costs us more to feed this dog yeah. than our newborn. So, so <laughs> how, how do you get people to stop making foolish decisions when that's what they've learned? Or maybe that's a pattern they've like, yeah, I, I think financial correction is painful. And and like, yeah. you know, we've counseled homeless people in our church who won't give up their pets. And I'm like, right. look, I'm not I'm not taking God's money to feed your dog. I'm sorry. And and some of you you love your, your dogs and you, you just left Sandals Church. I know. Hey, that's, <laughs> Whew, Matt. That, that's fine. Uh, we don't we don't bless fools. We just do not do that at our church because it's wasting God's money. Every dollar that people give to this church, it's a sacrifice to the Lord. It's placed mm -hmm. on the altar and it's holy. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to spend it in a way that reflects God's integrity. And so, so I think sometimes riding a ship is painful. You may have to say goodbye to a dog that you love dearly and find another home that can afford that dog and love that dog and care for that dog. And that's what we had to do. And it was mm -hmm. gut-wrenching mm -hmm. and it was horrible, but I couldn't buy diapers for my two little girls that weren't gonna stop pooping. So we had to do that, and so we made some, we made some difficult decisions. I had to drive a, an incredibly embarrassing car. Tammy's dad won a car at a baseball game. It was like a 1983 <laughs> Buick. It was the it was the most. My this dad's is, like, I have a car for you, Rob. <laughs> awesome. <Yay. laughs> this is a, this is a true story. This is how this is how big that car was. I rear-ended a woman in a Lexus on the corner of Riverside Avenue and uh, Central. She got out of her car and was cussing at me. I didn't even know I hit her. <laughs> it was a big old car with rubber bumpers, and she screamed at me, and she says, you probably don't even have insurance, and she got in her car and drove away. Here's the thing, though. I mean, the 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 way to course correct, if you will, it starts by being real, and I know that's mm -hmm. our vision, but it's also the, the truth in the situation of, like, we're not where we want to be, yeah. either in being able to afford the life we're living or... Mm -hmm being able to give to God and others the way our heart desires. So it starts with getting real about how you're living, what your values are, and maybe just saying we need to regroup, like a regrouping conversation of what is the most important things to us long term? Right. So what do we need to do in the short term? And then what are the most important things in the here and now? And that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, the like, Diapers. What, what can my, <laughs> I hate to use this word, um, like what's my allowance for this? or my, you know, envelopes, and people do envelopes for the, you know, figuring that the short term and the long term out. And the truth is some couples are just, if, if you just know like we've created a situation that maybe you're maintaining financially, but in your heart, you're just stressed out of your mind. Yeah. And anything like COVID or like a, any kink in, this, in the world, you're, it's all gonna come crashing down. Mm -hmm. That's no way to live. And so what needs to change? And the truth is some people need to bring in outside eyes, mm -hmm. outside counsel. Yeah. You know, so many people do the financial peace situation and you'll, you'll see those like, we're debt free in this, whatever, you know, and, and you're seeing people live rich on less. Yes. And I think that's, that's what Matt and I have gotten to done, gotten to done. That's what we have done is we lived on less then and we didn't get to have the things we saw all of our friends have. We didn't get to go do some of those things that we can do now mm -hmm. that we didn't do then because we didn't live like we could then when we couldn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and like I said, you're paying for it. 
we didn't credit card everything we didn't you know kind of a deal and so we're not paying for fun that we had two years ago and now we can't have fun now yeah we're just stressed real quick you referenced financial peace we have a class financial peace university um, that we do at all of our campuses and I, I think it's really helpful because some of you are probably sitting here going, how do we reverse this? Yeah, you know? yeah. And it really just walks through like budgeting and planning and all, all the things that maybe aren't intuitive or you haven't learned how to do mm -hmm. um, so that you can get back on track. Or you just know, really like I said, when you, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you were younger, when you started developing this habit and lifestyle, and now you're like, you have, you know something now you didn't then. How, how can we change this? And that's why that can help you. Of Like, whatever you did, you can't go back and not do it again but you can start again you you yeah. can launch differently and that might mean for the next year there is no travel there is no extra margin there is no fixing up the house or whatever but getting getting back into the right place the world is the world is yours and that's kind of how we get to live now not like we're living lavishly but we we get to live like we're rich because we don't owe anybody so the money we make yeah. is ours yeah right. And let me say, oh, yeah, let me say this. I mean, because especially a lot of the young men in our church, they almost have an adversarial uh, relationship with making money and money itself, and they feel like, um, you know, that's bad. You have to have money to survive. You have you, you have to fund your family, and so I think there are some of us that are chasing money because it's it, it's become evil in our life. But some of us are chasing laziness, and that's become evil in our life, and so. Like I have, I have to go to work. I have to do these things. Like, um, you know, my responsibility, and I take that seriously. Uh, you know, and I know Becca, you work, but I take it my responsibility as a man is to provide for my family. That's how I see myself. And you're entitled to your opinion and how you run your family. That's how I see myself. I see myself as the provider for the provider and the protector of my family. Those are non-negotiables, and those are things that I do. And so, a lot of the young men today. Um, they don't have that and um, you know you're, you're just gonna have to embrace that I was talking to a young man at a party and he, he literally said this out loud he's like yeah I could work at a pizza place and live in my car but he's married and I'm like not if you want to stay married yeah right? not <laughs> if you want to stay married to this gal you know you, you've got to light a fire under your own butt and and um, so I, I think that all of us are coming at some of us don't appreciate and value money the way we should and some of us over appreciate mm -hmm. and overvalue money and you just got to be honest about where you are on that spectrum um, I, I would just say you know Tammy and I have made a choice we want to value God and people not things and money mm -hmm. and we've put God and people first and um, I, I think money and things makes you shallow um, I think God in people makes you deep, and so I try to use my money to to facilitate those things, and you know that's why I have people like Andrew and Becca in my life now for gosh, 18, 18 years, years. Mm -hmm. yeah, 18 years, and you know when we met each other, you know uh, they were college kids working at Applebee's, and we've gotten that's to right. you know we've gotten to go through <laughs> you know this process together, and and really to do life together. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know people are critical of mega church, you know, big church, but we've got to do this together at a mega church, and, and it didn't start that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I would just say this, you don't fix anything in life without hard choices. Mm -hmm. That's the lie. The lie is you can make moderate changes and experience drastic results, right? So what do the diet pills say? You don't have to exercise, you don't have to work out, you don't have to change the way you eat. Let me help you lie, 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 right? Mm -hmm. All of that stuff. Truly changing your weight, changing your finances, changing your relationship with God, changing your marriage. Mm -hmm. All of those things start with Jesus' invitation, which is, if any man or woman would come after me, let them first deny themselves, uh, pick up their cross, and follow me. So, good. so, so the good. beginning to life is death, right? Mm -hmm. That's the beginning. And the reason that people are so miserable in their finances is that they haven't died to themselves. Mm -hmm. They haven't died to themselves. Mm -hmm. Tammy and I, our goal is not to build our dream house. Our goal is to build our dream church. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. And it's a, di it's a very different goal. And that's what we've spent our life doing. And I'm hoping our kids will follow in that, but it's tough yeah. because they're growing up in a different world. And, um, and you know, I wanna be married to the same woman. I wanna live my life in the same church. 
I want to serve the same God. And I just think that there's beauty in that, that, that so many people are missing. And, um, you know, Tammy and I, we just, we flew to Denver and we, we, we drove home. We rented a luxury car. Was it was fun? great. <laughs> I don't need to go buy one. You know, because my butt was going to sit in this seat for three days. Three days. It was great. I don't feel at all like I need to drive this luxury car. We dropped it off at Hertz and I was glad to be done with it. <laughs> and it, you know, we drove my Subaru home from the dealership and I love my Subaru. It's not the same. It just isn't, but it's okay. And we, we had a great time. And I, I think that's another thing is it's okay to enjoy, enjoy things and not have to own things. And where I see people get, they get twisted is, oh, I love Hawaii. We have to own a condo in Hawaii. Oh, I love the river. I have to own a house in the river. Oh, I love this. I, and what, what you're giving yourself is a part-time job. And you got all these jobs sure. And then you got to do all this cleaning and you got to do all this stuff. And, and we have this argument all the time. I love hotels because I don't have to clean it. I don't have to own it. And I don't have to fix it. All I have to do is pay for it and I walk away. Yeah. Um, and I get to enjoy all the benefits. And next year we can go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But when I own it, when it's mine, I feel like I already have, like I have my church, I have my wife, I have my kids, I have my staff. Like my hands are full. Mm -hmm. I don't need to keep piling stuff on and that's what I see a lot of you doing oh, I have to have this or I have to have this and now even pastors I have to write a book I have to have a blog I have to and I'm just like oh my gosh I'm already full um, I want God I want friends and uh, and I want to have margin mm -hmm. I want to have money in the bank um, you know it's 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 fun to have money so, in the bank so how, how do you how would you encourage people to work through the different value systems yeah to, to really get on the same page right so like, I mean, I think most people go, what you're saying is great, that makes sense. Um, she wants this, I want that, he wants this, I want that. H how do you like, you, you said the Enneagram, but like how do you get real with each other and decide what, what things do we cut or what things right. do we begin, you know, w when you don't have a lot of money or you're struggling. Yeah, here, or, here's what I would say is, and, and Andrew, you, you and I have talked about this a lot. You know, we have Tammy, we have Matt, and then we have our marriage. And you have to start seeing your marriage as a third entity. And so what does the marriage want? What does the marriage need? What, what, what pushes the marriage forward? And even when I do counseling, but, which you guys don't let me do anymore, but, but here, the, here's the breakdown in marriage counseling, right? The wife has her perspective. The husband has their perspective. And, and inevitably what the pastor has to do is have God's perspective, which is not the husband's or the wife's. Right. It's, it's the marriage. Yeah. It's for the marriage. And so... So here's the things that, you know, you know, that, that I want. Here's the things that Tammy want. And, and, and just know it is a process. And, and Tammy and I don't agree on many things. But we, we have to work through it together. Like we, don't, we haven't figured out retirement. Here's the good news. We're not there yet. We still have some time to figure out what that looks like, where we're going to live, how we're going to live. Like those things are not easy things. But in order for me to have Tammy in my life, like she has to have a voice, she has to have an opinion, she has to have a say, and I am the bigger personality. She's not a little personality. She's she's she she can, <laughs> That's cute. Like. She can swing she can swing for the fence, you know what I'm saying? But but she's not as big as me in terms of personality. She's not as outspoken as me. She doesn't have the big mouth like I do. So I have to I have to constantly say, Okay, I gotta I have a tendency in our marriage and she knows what I'm gonna say. As soon as she says something, I say no. It's the most annoying. <laughs> and here's the thing I've realized is I say no before I've listened, before I've thought about it, before I even tried to understand. And, and I'll say this, I'm sorry that I just said no. I don't know why I said no. I, I need to listen to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, because my personality now is, uh, oh man, me and my brother used to watch this cartoon when we were kids. It was this duck and he lived in a pile of gold. Ducktails. Ducktails. Yeah. That's right. Like my you swim, swim yeah, through his vault of coins. Fantasy. Like my yes, unhealthy I fantasy Which is, is totally ducktails. Possible. Yep. So right. So I want to die with a pile of gold, and I get that from my dad. And I tell my dad all the time, I was like, "You're gonna die, and I'm gonna spend your money." So, <laughs> so, so go, go get a ten dollar haircut. You know, I mean, live a little, mm -hmm. relax a little. But, but my dad, and you know, I'm similar to him, and my brother's the same way. We're not, we're not spenders in that way. But Tammy wants to live life and enjoy life, and I need to, I need to engage her in that, and I need to listen to what she has to say, and 
Well, I, that's kind I, of the point of marriage, right? Is you learn from each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you both bring value to the conversation yeah, and yeah, uh, your so differences. And, and what together. Tammy's had to learn to do is to say, is this a good time for us to buy this? Is this the season for us yeah. to do this? Because she's not paying our kids college bill. Like I'm the one watching that money and we got two kids in college. I'm watching that every month. Now we only have one. Now we have one, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm they watching got. that go out. And, and for you, a year. you think <laughs> kids are expensive year. now, man. I mean, that is like, Good Lord. Mm -hmm. And we're doing momentum. Like, we still owe $10,000 on our momentum commitment. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, I'll just tell you, uh, this is personal, but I went to Brian and, and Dan and I said, you know, Tammy and I want to pay our, our $10,000 momentum, but, you know, I don't know if the church is going to make budget this year. So if the church needs me to, I'm not, because once you ride it to momentum, we can't move that money around. Mm -hmm. it's, it's frozen legally. If I tell you I'm gonna, so I said, so Brian said, hold it. And then in December, Brian's gonna come to me and say, give it to momentum or give it to budget. And, and cause we're gonna give it this year mm -hmm. to finish up our momentum giving. Um, but he wants to, we don't know where we're gonna be yet. And, um, and, and so, so, you know, well, I don't know what my point was in that. Oh, it's just, what is the season? You know, I don't know, how did I get on momentum? I don't Sorry. know. You guys, yeah. We I, don't know. Well, I mean, actually, we're all used to you, Matt. But. Uh, <laughs> I love that you talked about um, your kids and what you've set up for your kids. And you mentioned something a little bit ago about modeling for your kids. If there's um, something that you think is really valuable to teach your kids about finances, yeah. um, how have you guys navigated that? What do you think is, you know, one tip, one piece of advice of like, here's what our kids really need to know about Yeah, money. I think Tammy and I, the biggest mistake we've made with our kids is we've protected them from all stress in regards to money. Mm. I think my parents did a much better job of helping me to understand money. So when I was a little kid and I went to church, my mom, I got a dollar allowance a week for my chores or mm -hmm. whatever it was, and my mom paid me in dimes. Mm -hmm. And my mom so said, my mom. yeah, my yeah. mom said, this, this dime yeah. is for savings. This dime is for God. These dimes are for you. Mm -hmm. And so my mom mm -hmm. helped me to begin to think at an early age of what do I do with money? And, you know, I remember when our kids were little, we were in Target and the girls wanted something. And I said, no, we don't have the money. And Madison said, just use the card. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's that's so what, simple. Yeah. You know, that's what she's seeing is you you, you pull that card out and, and you get whatever you want. And so we've had to really uh, and are still yeah trying to build some of that is the truth. I think if we could go back with our kids, I think our our kids have a deep respect for how to tra treat other people well, honor our parents, love their church. Um, I think out, out of us not being as intentional in that way that we're having to make up for some lost, mm -hmm. lost time there. So if you are younger or, I mean, you know, in a different season, you still have that, start doing that now. Yeah. You know, because part of it was just being so busy with the church, Yeah. so busy with work, so bu busy, it would be like, oh, we'll just take care of that. And instead of letting them wrestle through how to take care of some of those uh, things, how to earn mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I would say this. Here's the biggest mistake, and I know this isn't for parents, but it's a good thing to help your children experience disappointment. I, if you want to do anything for your child, help them to lovingly deal with disappointment because life is disappointing. Mm. And so we don't always get what we want, and it's not always fair. And so... Uh, and I think that's what it is in the, as married couples with our finances, some of us are disappointed maybe with the, you know, because when you're in college, or, you know, especially if you're young, right, you're, get, you're getting married with this idea. It's not real of this thing that's going to be. And, um, you know, Tammy married me. I was student body president. I was always like, if, if there was a race, I was going to be in front. You know, if there was a microphone, I was going to be on it. <laughs> you know, so that's who she knew. And then she marries a poor guy. So, so that's the vision. <laughs> And then the reality is he's a poor guy going to seminary, working at a bike shop part-time and a, a group home at night. So we're not even sleeping together. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm no, trying not to sleep at a group home so I don't get you know, inappropriately touched in the middle of the night. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was scary. And, and so that was our life. And it was, marriage is a crash course in reality of what, of what it's like. You know, we'd go on a date and Tammy'd spend three hours to get together, you know, get it together. And you're like, gosh, this woman is, just beautiful every day. Well, I didn't know she was spending three hours prepping for our, for our <laughs> then encounter. Then we got married, I'm like, hello! <laughs> you know? 
the real you. I'm like, wow, you're wearing those sweats again. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dude, sweats and COVID's been a real thing. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I just want to like point out a few of the principles. I love what yeah. you talked about. Like, thank you. Bring giving, it home, Andrew. Giving, <laughs> saving, and then spending. You know, and, I, and that's what we try and teach um, our son. Just like how important that is mm-hmm. to to put those in place. And I think a lot of people feel like it's too late. You know, like, oh, I've already messed up. And, yeah. and that's why we, like, that's why we're doing this. We want to encourage you to think differently, yeah. to work together, yeah. and not let um, finances be this, like, mm-hmm. division between you and marriage. Because one of the main stated reasons for divorce is finances. It's not the real reason. It's the stated reason yeah. because that's what they always remember fighting about. Mm-hmm. Um, and the issue is probably communication and principles and all those mm-hmm. things. Values. But But finances are so important in marriage. And we just want to encourage you to... To, to be willing to have those conversations, to be real with yourself about how much you value money or don't value money. And I think this is great perspective because you guys have modeled it well, you've lived it well, you've put the church first, you've given, we've received generosity from mm-hmm. you guys. Like I remember you guys taking us out to dinner and that was like one of the first times anyone had ever taken us out to dinner. And it was so special and we felt really loved by that. And we committed to each other. We're like, we wanna do that for other yeah. people. Like that, that meant a lot to yeah. us. And right, I love this, the this hard Doesn't the work. Bible say it is greater to give than to receive? Totally. Yeah. And, and, and most people never experience that. Yeah, and I love that you guys have done the hard work. And, and I think the principle is we have to tell our money where to go, right? We need mm-hmm. to direct it. We need to be in charge of well, it. Well, and that's such a good point because if you don't, it directs you. Right. And then you're just angsty and miserable. And then because you're miserable, now you're fighting with each other. Like, Money is such an important discipline in a marriage because mm-hmm. it's not about the money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And for yeah. me, for me, it wasn't about money. It was about insecurity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I was never going to be able to handle my money until I let God handle my insecurity issue. Mm-hmm. And um, and now I'm okay. I, if you have a beautiful home, you know, I can walk through your home and appreciate And I don't feel less. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like there's you can something. Celebrate it. Yeah, I can celebrate it, and, and thank God I don't have your bills because, <laughs> yeah. you know, because big houses come with big bills. And so, um, so, so if there's a couple like watching this, what would you say is like a next step coming out of this? To um, obviously, we're not going to encourage them to fight about money yeah. coming out of this. How can they begin a reasonable conversation about finances? Yeah, I would just say, you know, like, man, go for a walk, get get, get outside. Don't don't ever start this when the fight has already started. Yeah, this needs to be something when, man, you just made love and it was great, you know, and you're you're sipping a glass and of wine. So Let's talk budget. about money. Yeah. Let's go through some spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, you know, and 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 just and just to be open and honest. And guys, it's not an attack on your masculinity because you're not an accountant. You know, that's a reason why, you know, contractors, it's always contractors are always, they make a ton of money and they're always broke. Well, just because you can build something doesn't mean you can do math, right? Those are different gift sets. I mean, even the mob has accountants, you know? I mean, they're selling crack and dope and all that stuff, but they gotta have somebody to count it and keep track of it. So it's okay to say, I, I, I'm not a mathematician and, and I don't do this. I have this weird, um, uh, what's the guy, Rain Man quality. If it has a dollar si- signal next to it, I never forget a number. If it's your phone number. That's the weirdest thing. If yeah. it's your phone number, I don't know what her yeah. number is, right? But if it has a dollar sign next to it, I never forget it. And so there are different qualities and gifts and strengths that each couple has. And here's the thing, is if you're both stressed about money, the only way you're gonna get out of that is by you choosing to get out of it. So you gotta have that conversation and just say, I love you. Mm-hmm. This is stressing me out. Mm-hmm. This is this is causing me anxiety. And early on when Tammy would say that, guys, listen to me, I took it as an offense to my manhood. Mm-hmm. I took it as I'm. she doesn't believe I'm leading, I'm providing. Mm-hmm. Like, I took it very personal, and that was wrong. And what I needed to do was say, okay, I hear you that this stresses you out. What can oh, I good. do to meet you where you are so that you can feel safe, secure, and blessed? Um, yeah, that's so, that's so that's great. I think my yeah. quick answer to that would be stop trying to keep up with everyone around you. Mm-hmm. Um, it tends to be women more than men. They're looking at what their friends have, their friend's life. I think that when you're younger, all you see is what you see. As you get older, you know what you know. And I know that so many people that Matt and I looked at what people had and tried to copy it 
what we didn't know what was going on with where they were. Yeah. And it, it's nothing that I would want, you know? And so stop trying to keep up with other people and make sure you're building your house right. Yeah. And I don't mean your literal house, I mean your marriage, right? Yeah, yeah. Because people might have everything and you're trying to get it and you're gonna get lost mm. in it. And what you don't know is there's a, there can come a misery that you don't see. I'm not saying yeah. everybody's miserable that has everything sure. going on. I'm just saying we try to keep up with people and what we don't know we're grasping for is actually someone else's misery. Wow. Yeah. You wow. Know? That's and so and Andrew knows this, but the, the people in our church that write $100,000 checks, million dollar checks, I'm not kidding you, you'd never recognize them. You'd never know. Mm. You'd never know. They don't drive the fanciest cars. They're not, they don't have jewelry hanging all over them. Uh, oftentimes their houses aren't even what you would consider elaborate. Uh, these are principal people that God has blessed and they live for God and for people and they are swimming in money because the Lord tends to bless people that are faithful to what he wants blessed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I, I, I just can't, I can't tell you that enough. And, and here's what I would do is don't find somebody that looks like they have money. Find people. So after 08, uh, during the crash, Riverside went through the worst economic uh, I mean, it's way worse than what we've gone through so far this year. So I'm hoping it, you know, COVID doesn't destroy us again, but 08, 09 was the worst. I found the richest guy in Riverside. He's worth about $250 million. And I called his secretary and I said, I want to meet for lunch and I don't want any money. I just want wisdom. I had to call 10 times. I just, I don't want any money. I just want wisdom. And he didn't want to meet with me because you know what he thought I wanted was money. money. Mm -hmm. And I said, how is it that you survive this and all my other rich friends are all in the tank and I said give me three principles and he and he just gave me principles and he's sitting there and you know in shorts and flip-flops and a t-shirt the guy is a private jet you know in Riverside Airport it's the only one there uh, he doesn't live in Orange County he doesn't live in LA why because he wants to make money he wants to do big things with his money uh, you know his philosophy is you can't buy it twice don't buy it you know, huh. I mean, he he had all these principles. Interesting. If you can't buy it twice with cash, don't buy it. Like yeah. he had all these principles that he said he's lived by, and um, he's the richest dude by far in our city. Um, well, and I love what you, what you did there was that you sought out counsel, and that can be a very vulnerable thing at some point to go. Yeah, I might not have it all together. Who can I go? to ask who can I get wisdom from and invite somebody else into that space. Yeah. I think that's a really beautiful yeah, thing. I don't mind making a mistake. I cannot stand making it twice. Mm -hmm. That is, most people, they're not offended by that. They just, they'll make the same mistake over and over and over again. And I just, I cannot stand burning my hand twice in the same way. Like I just mm -hmm. get frustrated and I wanna learn and, and I wanna grow. And if you just, if you just open your eyes, there are people that are doing really well. So the question is, what are they doing? Right. And how can I do that? And if you're not, that's where that conversation starts, is what we're doing isn't working, mm -hmm. right. you know? And let's, so, let's talk through it. Yeah, it let's talk through it. Um, what worked then maybe doesn't work now because another predicament people get into is maybe they did have a lot of money one time and developed a certain style of life and something's changed. Yeah. And we're living the same, but we're not which creates a tension. Mm -hmm. And the tension isn't the marriage, it's the money. And I think as Christians, as the church, all of our goals need to be not to be slaves to money. Mm. And, and if we're not intentional in it, that's, that's what we see happen to people over and over and over. And we don't want to be a slave to money. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think I would encourage everybody, and you know, you guys have talked about both heart stuff and practical stuff. Mm -hmm. Start with the heart stuff, right? Yeah. Work through it together. Make sure your heart's in the good place, that you're about building God's kingdom and not your own. But that bring you're... God into your finances yeah. instead of pretending they're two things. Those two separate right. things, right. right? Right. Don't just start yeah, with the budget. So yes, mm -hmm. you need to do that. But like start with, hey, we want to be responsible. We want to be wise. We want to mm -hmm. be generous. And then work toward, hey, how do we do that? Hey, let's start with our budget. Let's start with how we spend. Let's work together. And so I want to encourage you to do that. You know, we have a great class that Tammy mentioned, Financial Peace University. We're going to do a modified version of that coming out of this conference, which we'll talk about later. But that's going to be just a great opportunity for you to take a next step to begin to work on your finances and work through it. And so thank you guys so much for yeah, thank you. sharing your wisdom and uh, yeah. leading us through that. You guys are a great model, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Love you.